In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But we are we confess our sins. God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause to reflect upon our own personal need for the mercy and grace of our God. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may be like your will and walk your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our psalm reading today, we join together in celebrating our God's love for us on Psalm 65, verses 9 to 13. You visit the earth and water it. Greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the river, for so we have prepared. And water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges. Softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your way attracts overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills turn themselves with the meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the for the 
strength and support through the Holy Scriptures. Indeed, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Holy us, we pray, to make regular usage of this energizing good news, so that we might lay hold of the blessings you have promised. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the Word made flesh and who dwell among us. Please be seated for the reading of our lessons. <coughs> the Old Testament lesson assigned for today is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it mud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the plain tree, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign will not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson appointed for this day is the continuing word of St. Paul in the book of Romans where it lays out for us in a very lengthy and beautiful way the power of being children of God by faith in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. That our obligations now are not to try and earn salvation by our good works, but to do our good works as we respond to the faith that God has given us through the power of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. This is the word of the Lord. same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil, it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil 
where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. And then some verses later, Jesus explains the parable. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated as we join in singing the next time. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I'd like to spend time on today is the Epistle Lesson read by Pastor Otto. I read again a small portion of it. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. This is our text. Brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
There is a lot of good evidence to suggest that the way a person carries himself, that is, whether he approaches life as an optimist with confidence, with joy, or whether he approaches life as a pessimist with fear and with angst, has a lot to do with the messages he is given from a very young age by his family and by peers. Kids who grow up being constantly corrected, constantly put down, constantly made fun of, often grow up believing that they have no value and approach life with the mindset that no one, no one has any interest in what they have to say. And so their heads are down, their steps are guarded, their minds are trained to believe that they are at their best when they are passive, when they do what they're told, when they live according to someone else's designs, and when they don't say too much. In contrast, those who get the message early on that they matter, that their ideas are valuable, that their actions are helpful, who are encouraged to take chances, praised for their attempts to make a difference, and thanked for their contributions to the family, grow up with the idea that they can be, in their own world at least, a mover and a shaker that they can live life with confidence and poise because they are gifted and blessed by God. I want to share with you that I personally grew up in a home that it was a bit more of the former than the latter. That is, there were many negative messages, both from parents and older siblings, that subtly, or not so subtly, suggested to me that others may have greater value that I was best when I was doing what others told me, and that my ideas, while valuable, were usually suspended, superseded rather, by those who were older, smarter, or more in the know. I don't think this was anyone's goal, intent, or design. I don't think that there was some evil plot to keep me in check or to undermine my skills. I just think, and I bet a lot of you lived under the same pre premise, that's the way my family op operated. Whether it's because I was the youngest of six kids, or whether it's because there was already baggage from previous generations, or whether it was maybe just my own misinter misinterpretation of the facts, that's the way it seemed. For years, I carried my head down and stayed silent. I was shy and introverted, hesitant and uncertain. And then something happened that transformed my life. Due to a changing dynamic in our family church, we moved to a new congregation. The two youngest of us, still teenagers, were encouraged to become involved in the youth group. And I want to tell you that there I encountered some wonderful leaders who made it their business to encourage kids to celebrate their abilities and accomplishments, to listen to what they had to say. I remember plainly and specifically one day when I had volunteered to be part of an Advent chancel drama. I was the reader, and I read into the microphone, in, I, I, as we practiced, I read into the microphone in my traditional way, with a heart beating fast, with my mind telling me that I would screw up, my head down, my eyes glued to the text. And our youth group leader, Mrs. Doofendock, we called her Mrs. D, because no one could say Mrs. Doofendock, came over, put her arm around my shoulders and said, Phil, why are you so afraid? You're one of the best readers in this group, and more importantly, you're a child of God. He's right there next to you when you read. You're going to do a fantastic job, so lift your head, speak into the microphone like it's already finished, and you did it perfectly, because God is right there to help you. Wow. So different from the speak up, we can't hear you, or giggles and laughter, or finding someone else. This woman chose to see something in me different than I saw in myself. This woman didn't just say I had potential. She said, you're a child of God. And in time, what she saw became more and more real to me and to the world. Today, in truth, by nature, 
I am still that hesitant guy and still carry around some of the baggage that was part of my childhood. The negative messages, without a doubt, still flow more easily than the positive ones. In some ways, I'm sure you don't ever really get rid of that completely. Nevertheless, there is another voice that cries out again and again and again to balance that anxious, nervous, fear-filled teenager. He is the Holy Spirit who declares me to be a child of God, a man blessed by God with various talents and gifts, and who in Christ has value. I am keenly aware that I am not perfect. I know well, maybe better than most, my struggles and failures and faults. But I know that I am connected to one who loved me enough to give everything for me, and who calls me out of darkness and into his marvelous light and calls me his servant. This is the message, brothers and sisters, St. Paul wanted to convey to the Roman Christians and to you and me in our text for today. The value we have as children of God that he has placed in us as servants of Christ, our potential to impact the world and to make a difference because of who I who we are is a very powerful message. Now don't get me wrong. Paul also knows our history. That we are sinners who deserve God's wrath, God's punishment, God's scolding, God's condemnation. He knows that every day in some way we are going to pull out that old person and live not as victorious children of God, but according to the flesh, yielding to its passions and pleasures, falling prey to its deceptions and dreams, and getting ourselves caught up in the thoughts, actions, words, and deeds of darkness. He knows it. He knows it very well. In fact, in Romans chapter 7, which we read a few weeks ago, he talked about his own personal struggle with the same thing when he wrote, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but sin living in me. I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. Wretched man I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Yeah, St. Paul knew it. But St. Paul also knew that our sinful nature is not king anymore. Jesus came to liberate us from slavery to that old person, to take the chains off. And when he died on the cross to pay the penalty, he took it all away. So now there is no reason to walk with our heads down, our steps guarded, our minds trained to believe that we are helpless, poor, miserable sinners. No, that's why Paul declares, you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. So those voices that ring in your ears and tell you, as they told me, as I'm sure they tell others too, that you have no reason for joy, no reason for confidence, no reason to lift up your head and use the formidable talents and gifts God's given you to his glory. Tell them to be quiet. In fact, more than that, take them over to the baptismal font, hold them under the water, and let them wriggle a little until they stop wriggling. And say to yourself, no. I will not listen to that nonsense anymore. I am a child of God. 
Jesus paid the price for my sins and has released me from slavery. I am no longer captive to the law of sin and death. I read you St. Paul's struggle. Let me read to you St. Paul appropriating God's freedom. In Galatians chapter 2, he says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Retooling the mind. It's a blessing, my friends. And you know what? Not only can you walk with your head high and your heart ablaze, but you can also do, my friends, what Mrs. Doofendock did for me. You can be a tool of God's Spirit to lift up other spirits. Look around you at your brothers and sisters here, for instance. How many of them are just yearning to hear a word of encouragement, a word of thanks, a word of hope, a word of comfort, a word of love, of praise, of prayer? Maybe you don't even know it. Maybe you don't know what they're going through. But they're out there. And go from in here to out there and the number grows exponentially. Because out there so many are still trapped and do not know the freedom that comes from the love of Jesus. Can I make a request of you? Don't leave this building today. Don't step one foot out into that parking lot without taking a moment to share a word of uplift with someone else who's here today. And make it a practice, if you wouldn't mind, to do it every week, every single time. Look around you and find someone and share a word of hope. Because that's part of why we're here. We're not just here to learn. We're here to put into practice what we learn. As the writer of Hebrews says it so plainly to us, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. I'm so glad that God used Mrs. Duvendock to help me see Jesus in a new and different way. May God also use you to impact the joy of your brothers and sisters here and out there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us declare our Christian faith to God and to one another as we speak the words of our common confession of faith, the Nicene Creed. We join together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God. Light of light, very God, very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sin and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was a made man, and was crucified also for us in the conscious time. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of your life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in my holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
You may be seated now as we receive your offer. We give to you, dear Lord, what you have first given to us. We pray that you would use these gifts for the work of your kingdom, that your word might be proclaimed among us and also throughout the world. Bless these, that the, the sonship that we receive might be the message that is proclaimed, and that more and more may know the joy that comes from being your child. In Jesus' name we pray. Another of items in our prayers for today. Uh, begin with uh, prayers for those who have lost loved ones. Uh, we want to pray for Angela Pomeroy's family, uh, uh, the Roche and Merrick families. Uh, Tom Roche, which is uh, Angela's mom, Patricia's uncle, passed away. And uh, we ask comfort and peace to be with them. This is all, also a tough week for Angela because. Uh, uh, Pat has it, had his surgery. It did go well. He was able to come home from the hospital this week, so we thank God for that and we pray comfort and peace uh, uh, for Angela and her family. Uh, Judy mentioned last week uh, her friend Bobby, and Bobby did pass away, so he has also comfort and peace uh, for his family. We got word this week that uh, Paul, Stephanie, April, and Brian Meyer are going to be. Uh, uh, Paul's taking a new position in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, so in the next few weeks they'll be heading along to a new location. A uh, big change for them, uh, for Dick and Caroline and for the rest of the family. We certainly pray God's blessing upon that journey, and uh, uh, hopefully they'll be here at some point and we'll be able to say that they're, they're actually out there now and uh, scoping out some things, and so we certainly pray God's blessing to them and pray that it gives a smooth transition to them. I did try to ask Paul and Stephanie to consider commuting back and forth to be a savior, but they were the last to do uh, We rejoice with uh, Russ and Joe, who celebrate 65. Uh, also this week, uh, uh, Darwin and Violet uh, Ulrich are celebrating their 62nd anniversary. Then we want to pray. I mentioned Pat already in our prayers today. Uh, Cheryl Burns, Dad Leonard. Struggling with stomach cancer and need further testing and, and part of the treatment for obstruction. We pray for him. Uh, Ethan Myers, father in law Steve, is having cancer surgery a little bit later this month. Uh, she will my sister in law Fran is in hospice care at this time. Also, we pray for Addie and Sandy, relatives of uh, relatives and friends of Sheila uh, Jimenez, uh, one struggling with lung and heart condition, the other esophageal and stomach cancer. Also, I uh, heard uh, this, that uh, Marguerite Hilkendorf uh, took a fall over Memorial Day uh, and in doing some, uh, some rehabilitation, uh, over, uh, overexerted and 
so she is now recovering from a couple of stress fractures, so we pray for my I'd like to ask at this time that there are any other special prayers that we can remember before our Heavenly Father. Anything else to add? Then please stand with me. The prayer that is projected is also on page four of your bulletin, if you wish to follow there. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, we give thanks that you have given your only Son to redeem us from sin and death. Grant that we might always rejoice in your steadfast love, repent of sin, and be led forth in peace all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would preserve us from every temptation so that the word might not be snatched from our hearts, but that we might always cling to the news of your kingdom in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for your church throughout the world, particularly for those who are persecuted for your name's sake. Continue to send forth your word among them that they might be rooted in your gospel and steadfast in the faith. Grant that we might hear your word, receive it with joy, and continue to grow in faith and understanding, so that we might cling to the cross in times of suffering and persecution. Lord, in your mercy. Your heart. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the many blessings you pour out upon us for this life. Preserve us by your word, so that our faith might not be choked by the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches, but that we might use what you have entrusted to us in service to you and to those whom you have placed around us. Lord, in your mercy. Your Heavenly Father, we commend to you all who are in need of deliverance from affliction, grief, and suffering. Give to them relief according to your will and grant them comfort and faith. We especially pray for Pat and for Leonard, for Steve and Fran, for Addie and Sandy and Marguerite. Lord, in your mercy. Your we give thanks to you, O Lord, for the saints who have gone before us and now rest from their labors. Grant that we might live in our baptism also until we are numbered among your people in heaven. We especially pray, O Lord, for the, the Roche and Merrick families and for the Netter family. Lord, in your mercy. Your Lord, we rejoice and celebrate with those uh, who are enjoying Special days, we thank you, O Lord, for the love that you have given to Russ and Joe and also to Darwin and Violet. We pray that you would continue to surround them with your presence and mercy and grace and guidance. Bless their days ahead, even as you have blessed their days together before. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also pray for those who journey. We thank you for the new job opportunity for Paul, and we pray that you would be with him and Steph and with April and Brianne as they make uh, this new journey. Guide and keep them in your care and bless them in their new home. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This is the remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. The cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body 